Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Caleb Basolti. So today I'm going to show you guys about how to taxidermy a crustacean, lobster, blue crab. What I ended up doing right here was a blue crab. This is the one that I ended up working on in the video. So you can see here, I did the claws. Um, there's no smell to it. The process is pretty simple. Um, it's not too hard to do. So just make sure the video, the video is going to be super long, uh, but you can just skip through whatever parts you, you want or watch the whole thing if you want, but I'm just going to post everything I did so you kind of, you know, could see what I was doing. This was, I'm just going to show you some of the mounts I've done so you kind of get an idea. So this was actually the first mount I ever done. As you can see, it's pretty damn horrible, but as far as like me being able to preserve something, um, I'm pretty proud of it because I was at least able to do it, but I learned a lot. Like you can see the the tail got messed up. When they dry out, they're like leaf paper. There is a little bit of super glue like I had on my finger that I touched. I didn't use uh, clear super glue and I left too much meat inside here so when it decayed, like when it dried out, it really took a lot of color. But come on me real quick, I'm gonna show you like my uh, room I'm still working on. And these mounts I've done like really good on. Like that blue crown. So this is actually the first blue crab I did after doing the lobsters, but I done it so much. Um, I, I pretty much figured out how to do it and keep the color. And then this is a lobster mount I did, and you can see like I kept the whole natural color, and this lobster is exactly how it looked when I first caught it. I kind of just, um, I took as much meat out as I could, and I, I left it outside and in the shade, so there wasn't direct sunlight, and I coated it with spray paint before. Like you can see like on this blue crab, the colors are a little bit better than the blue crab I have out there that I did in the video because I coated it with paint first. So as soon as you take it out the freezer, or as soon as you're ready to taxidermy, coat it with the gloss paint. It's going to really help keep the color because there's still going to be sun out there. Um, but I'm going to take this off real quick for you and show you. But pretty much all I did was cut down the tail right here. And when the meat, I froze the meat. Well, I got it cold enough, I pulled it out before it comes out in one section. And then you can pull off the head from the legs, or you can dig in there, get as much meat as you can. But yeah, it's a super simple process. With the blue crab, like um, with the lobster, you have to use the flies to get the meat. Because there's so much meat. Or you could try soaking and bleach, it really all depends. Like if there's too much meat, the flies are going to have to get to it, but it's going to cause a smell. With the blue crab, I didn't need to use any flies. You're just going to clean as much meat as you can. And the meat in the legs, you're going to leave and you're going to soak it in bleach. So I soaked it in bleach for like an hour and then I left it out to dry. And when the lobster dried, no flies went to it, didn't have any smell. And the meat just dries with the bleach in there. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching the video. I'm going to go get to this video now and hope you enjoy. Later. Alright, so I thawed him out, so you can see all the legs move now. Took only about five minutes, some hot water. And let's get to work. First things first, put them on the table. And let's lay our crab out. What I want to do is separate this top shell, the head, from the body so I can get into the meat and everything. So what I do is I take this knife. And I insert it right here just super gently. You already see it start to lift up. And you want to stick this blade you know, it's going to go way up in here. And then you should be able to start prying it. But you want to be really gentle. 
because you don't want the blade to pop through the shell because it's going to ruin what you're working on. There it goes. So you can see it's already popping out. And I'm just enter entering the blade here to try to separate the gills. Perfect. So we're first gonna work on this head. I'm actually just gonna take him, put this here. Now what you wanna do is clean out all this shit inside here. So you can kind of see this piece. And you're basically just going to want to clean it all out. So the main reason you, you really just want this thing cleaned out as much as you can is just to get rid of the smell and you don't want the, the shell to lose color when it decays. And as well, the more you clean out now, the less of a smell there's going to be at the end of the day. So you can see kind of now all this stuff is coming out. And I mean, you can do whatever you kind of want to do to clean these out. It's kind of up to you. So now I have the crab here. I have about a dollar toothbrush. I'm just going to take it here. I'm getting all this dirt off because this dirt is what sat on the show throughout its lifetime. You know, sitting in the mud. So take here. Just give a good brush on the top of the show. Any grime you see, just get that out. See, I got the bottom of the show cleaned up. Anything we can clean out in here definitely want to make sure you can get make sure you don't mess up these pieces because that's part of the mouth so be careful so you can see here this crab I mean the head of the crab is pretty much ready now, we're gonna handle this part. So first things first, 
we're gonna remove these gills so all of these things right here are laid up on the crab see all these dark things these are all the gills so we're gonna first work and cutting all these guys off be careful uh, careful with the mouthpieces here so now what I have these scissors for is I can't get into here to clean this meat out so I take my scissors and I'm gonna cut in there so I'll say here right there So now all you want to do is dig out as much as you can. I'm going to get a fork. So you see here, I'm digging all this out, all this meat. So this meat, if you guys want, you can eat it. You can save the meat, but the claws, that's something you're not going to be able to save. But yeah, with this process, don't rush it. Take your time. Don't cut too much you know into these bones because when all this meat's gone the crab's gonna have less structure and you don't want it falling apart on you um, another option too if you have the what I don't have is if you have like a little pressure washer I mean, you don't want something that's going to blast too hard, but you can shoot it in the legs and do a better job than by hand. I then take the water here. It's going to help clean out the rest. Now, I need a little more pressure. Make sure you hold the mouth. So now, we're going to deal with the smell before I leave them out.
Now I'm basically just gonna leave the, what's it called? I'm gonna leave the crab in there for the bleach for about half an hour, <clears throat> maybe a little longer. That's just gonna help get rid of that crab smell. So now I have it in a shaded spot. So when the sun comes in the afternoon, the crab's gonna be covered. But I'm gonna let this dry out. See this, it's all clean. But yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, welcome back guys. So this is the blue crab. As you can see, the shell is clean. There's literally no smell to it. When you smell the shell, it just smells like bleach which is good um at least i figured out how to get the smell out so i know it doesn't look clean yet because i haven't put any clear coat i probably should have done the clear coat first so if you guys are going to do this like i said do the clear coat first it's just going to help keep the colors because i did lose a little bit like you see here on the legs if you can see that josh a little bit here lost in the legs if you had an air gun you could fill it, um, but like I said, this is just a cheap way if you want to do a mount. So I have this crazy glue I'm using. I do prefer, I don't really prefer this glue because you see when it dries, it gets like, uh, it's not clear. So if you can get clear glue, use that. I'm just using what I have and just notate how you want to use it. So normally with these shells, um, I do like to fill this in with a little bit of foam to help give structure, but I'm not going to. Well, the reason I'm not filling this one up with foam is because I'm going to have this one standing. It's not going to be a wall mount, so I want it to be a little lighter for the legs. But I'm just dabbing some glue here. Just dabbing on some glue. So I'm just taking the glue here. And then you can see here, the mouth. I kind of... You can move the crab how you want the mouth position. So I'm going to take some glue here. Hold the mouth like that. Just going to hold it for a few seconds. If you can get glue, try to get uh, like a super glue, but get a clear glue because you want it to dry fast when you're working with the crab. I'm just holding it there. So now you see this mouthpiece. So I'm just gonna take some glue here, drop it all down in there. Now I'm gonna hold the mouth just like that. And I'm going to wait uh, about a minute just to let it dry. Alright, so right now he's dry. But as you can see, the legs and the claws, they're not in the position I want. So when the, sh when the crabs do dry, you can't move the legs. If you try to move them, they're going to break. So they do need to be soaked in water. And the limbs are going to move again. So just go here.
see the legs already starting to move. Let's get in the fall. I'll say this is good. Now, I'm gonna put them back on this box. I'm I'm gonna start moving these. You know, kind of how I want them to be. The thing is, you gotta be, pay very close attention because when he dries, he dries. And he's gonna dry in the position you want. So, I'd say like that is how I'm gonna want him to be. I want his claws open like that. So now, I'm gonna take my super glue. And you're gonna glue every joint. So let's first start. So I'm going to glue all these joints. And I'm just dropping glue in there. I'm just being careful with how I do do this glue because it's going to dry crystallize. Like it's not going to dry clear. Like I said, I'm just dropping little spots of glue in the joints. Like I said, he's not going to move unless he gets wet. And when his joints dry, like if you leave him here, the joints and everything's going to dry out. Again, with the water in the position you want. But I like to throw glue along the joints just for extra stability. Now, this is the glue I use that's uh, it's clear Gorilla Glue, which I really like using. But, like, I need a lot of glue to dry these limbs to keep them from moving so that's why I want to use this so put a big gob there So now I'm just gonna let him dry. And you see here, this is what I was talking about, the crazy glue. You see how it's a little crystallized there? It's not clear. So that's why you wanna make sure you use clear glue like this, but super glue. This is a clear Gorilla Glue, but it doesn't dry fast. It has like a full cure 24 hours, and I'll probably keep like objects together in like two hours. 
paint I uh, use, you just need a uh, clear coat gloss, clear gloss coat. This is what's going to really make the difference. I don't really have any left, so hopefully I have enough. But this is what's going to make the huge difference in the look of the car. I just covered my nose. I'm going to breathe this stuff in. You can already see the difference in how much profession, more professional it looks. Just buy the clear coat. Which gives it that wet, you know, professional look. Yo, what's up guys? So this is the final product. I got his arms glued. And yeah, he's done. So I kind of super glued the joints to kind of keep him where he is. I did the, the gloss spray paint. And I positioned them how I wanted them. But this is the finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As you can see, it's super easy to do. Um, you can take just about any crustacean and make it happen. I mean... Of course, it's not perfect. There's a few things I could have done, you know, to make it more, like, professional. But if you're just looking to do a DIY, you don't want to pay any money, use some house household products, uh, this is how you could do it. Um, with the crabs, I actually, this is the key note, I didn't even need the fly since I soaked it in bleach first. And I took all the meat out. Uh... Flies really didn't lay eggs or anything in the crab because of the bleach. And then the meat and all, all the claws, it dried out with the bleach. So there's literally, there's no smell. Yeah, I, I put my nose out, I don't smell anything. And the little set that I do smell, it smells like bleach. But yeah, I mean, this is as good as I could get it. My recommendation is as soon as you did the cleaning process, coat it with the clear coat first. It, it's probably going to help you know keep the colors and try to keep it in not a hot area when you leave it outside for a few days and you know let it air dry but it's a learning process for sure as you can see the first one I did over there came out quite horrible with the reddish color it lost all the coloring but it's a learning process you'll do a few of these and then you'll really start to master them and you know get to a professional quality and figure out you know how you want to do them but thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe if you like this content stay tuned